I um, welcome opportunities to give voice to the beings that you've actually walked through to get into this room. I want today to introduce some connections between the creative process of making the beings and how we were drawn into relationship with them and how that is the beginning or the ongoing deepening of love and action. I begin with story, and that story begins with breakfast, and breakfast in the Capel Valley. It was in October 2010. A group of women had gathered together to deepen their understanding of Carolyn McDade's new music, uh, Widening Embrace. Most of us know how Carolyn's music has sustained women over the years in their work of human justice, social activism and environmental change. The chance question over breakfast was, what is the fabric piece that is going to accompany this latest CD as it's released? Martha Cole, who's a fabric artist, Madeleine LePage, who's a dancer and singer, and I were sitting, sitting at the same table. The seed was planted, and that seed has become All Beings Confluence. Now, nearly 200 panels. Our vision at the beginning was to create panels of fabric. Madeleine envisaged people dancing through these panels in response to Carolyn's song Remember Here, which is on this CD. The song is based on a conversation between two environmental activists while paddling in National Arctic Refuge. In the song, a question is asked, what do we remember here, otherwise forgotten? What do we remember that we must ne'er forget? In the con original conversation, Carol Kaza's immediate answer to that question was wholeness, wholeness. Don't all of us have that yearning for wholeness when life becomes so busy? And then the yearning resurfaces as we slow down enough to witness the activity and hear the sounds of the natural world. So, early in February, when most people are going south, we met in Saskatchewan. <laughs> <laughs> Madeline Shannon, who had joined us and I, met with Martha at her studio in, in Saskatchewan to begin to create and to discover at that time, Coral, Breath, Monarch and Otter River were born and released. We worked with recycled shears. By that time, all our homes had become collection points for recycled <laughs> shears of all shapes and sizes. We painted using dyes mixed with wheat paste and with sewing machines. Larger questions emerged. How do we show interrelatedness and interdependence? How do we create wholeness while celebrating diversity of a huge number of beings, both human and more than human? How can the voice of these beings be heard how can this project build community and affect change? And how can it happen with no budget? <laughs> Deeper concepts emerged. First the name, All Beings Confluence. A confluence is a gathering of two or more streams into the whole into wholeness. Secondly, each being we, was created on a single sheer panel, ideally hung from a single thread, 
so that each being turns and is always seen in relationship with one another and with those around them. No being ever hangs alone. Here we were celebrating wholeness by celebrating diversity and the interconnectedness of all forms of life on the planet. There was also a clear sense that we would accompany the beings. We saw ourselves as their companions. We lost any sense of superiority, becoming part of rather than in control of. Our expectations was that the beings would self-organise and that we would enable them to do their work. And do their work they did. Martha held a number of workshops and fabric artists, singers and people who wouldn't even call themselves artists or singers began to catch the vision. And across the country people began to create beings. A catalogue was created. This is the catalogue and shows the story of each of the beings. Wow. Equally, a listserv was created so that electronically we could keep the concept and people could learn and discover themselves. Just six months later, we had 80 beings and they were at the recording studios in Banff, hanging as the recording was made. They each had their own story. The vision of the beings giving energy to singers as they moved into the recording studios became a reality. The beings seemed alive. They were breathing as they moved gently in the wind, responding to us moving through them. We, in turn, responded to them. The beings were doing their own work of celebrating diversity while embracing wholeness. And so began the travels of the beings to each launch, launch across the country and into the US with its own complications of meeting people at the border. They travelled in the suitcase with wings and have continued to do so. Martha continues to lead workshops and is the keeper of the beings. Now nearly 200 have been created. Several of us were at the last installation just two weeks ago in Regina. A few weeks ago prior to that, 175 were present at Western Women's Conference, Naramata Centre in BC. So where are the connecting points? that each being has its own story and draws us deeper into themselves. When we listen to the call of, this be of the beings, it may be Loon as she returns to her breeding ground, only to find it no longer exists. Does she know that more mercury has been found in her body? It may be prairie grass or badger as she faces extinction. It may be the call of the land. All these beings are a constant reminder of the interconnectedness of all of life. There's nothing new here. Naturalist John Muir wrote in 1911, when we try to pick out anything by itself in the universe, we find it's hitched to everything else. Mm -hmm. As we move through these beings, seeing them relating to each other, we're reminded again of the interconnectedness of the sacred web of life. We are also reminded of the power of love, which is never finalised but always in the promise of becoming. Thank you.